हेलो फ्रेंड्स सी वी स्ट्रोक ऑफ एंड डिस्क्राइब्ड एज सेरेब्रो वॉस्कुलर एक्सीडेंट द नेम इट सेल्फ इज सेल्फ एक्सप्लेनेटरी मीन्स इट इज लाइक एन एक्सीडेंट वी ऑल आर अवेयर दैट एवरी मिनट काउंट्स एन एक्सीडेंट टू सेव अ ह्यूमन लाइफ हैंस टाइमली मेडिकल अटेंशन and intervention will not only save life but it does prevent the permanent neurological deficit thereby preventing from becoming future liability for the family in recent years there is significant rise in numbers in cv stroke the disease hasn't spread youth adult and even women apart from contemporary reasons and another reason is post covid sequelae which added fuel to fire the purpose behind making this video is to make medical awareness regarding such a concern topic and hoping a healthy life ahead for everyone in this video we will include anatomy causes pathology clinical features investigations management of cv stroke let's begin with it Moving towards the 
pathological aspect of CBCO. Firstly, the trauma will get detached from artery or ventricular wall, and that's analyzed in the arterial circulation. Further, it does fragmentation and lysis quickly. Alternatively, if the occlusion lasts longer, it will result into producing a CV stroke. But by God's grace, the cerebrum has ample amount of blood supply from the central as well as collaterals. Despite of complete blockage of blood vessels by emboli, the periphery are still alive due to collaterals that is known as penumbra. But the collaterals may also die if the blood supply is not restored within time, ultimately resulting into irreversible neurological deficit. Hello, myself Nidhi Nakhani. I am going to discuss about the clinical features of the middle cerebral artery syndrome. The sign and symptom of the middle cerebral artery syndrome is according to the structure involvement. So first we will be discuss about the complete middle cerebral artery syndrome. So in which the occlusion occur at the same or the origin of the middle cerebral artery and the symptoms produced are like first contralateral hemiplegia. Due to the involvement of the motor cortex there is a symptom like the paralysis of the opposite half of the body. And the second is a contralateral hemianesthesia. Due to the involvement of the sensory cortex there is sensory impairment in the opposite half of the body. The sensory impairment are like tactile localization, tactile discrimination, stereognosis, vibration, joint position, fine touch, etc. The next is homonomous hemianesthesia. Due to the involvement of the visual cortex, there is a visual field loss in the half of the vision in the same side, which means person cannot able to see the half of the vision. The next is vernix aphasia. Aphasia means inability to speak. The vernix aphasia means comprehension of language is difficult. Person cannot able to understand the question and give the answer without any understanding. In which the speech of the person is fluent and the grammatical structure is also perfect. The vernix aphasia is also known as global aphasia. The vernix aphasia is seen when the dominant hemisphere is affected because the vernix area is present only in the dominant hemisphere. For an example of vernix aphasia, I am asking her, what is your name? I am happy living with a poor family member. I like to do art. Have a nice day. Good luck. As we have seen the example of vernix aphasia, she was giving the answer in the fluent manner and the grammar is also perfect. But she cannot understand the question and give the answer without any understanding. The next is Broca's aphasia, in which person can able to understand the question, but he cannot find the exact word to speak. The speech is non-fluent and the grammatical structure is also imperfect. The Broca's aphasia is also known as expressive aphasia because the expression of language is difficult. For an example of Broca's aphasia, I am asking her, what is this? Is this a water bottle? As we have seen that her speech was stammering, but she can able to understand the question and give the answer in the perfect manner. So now next is a, some psychological symptom. Psychological symptoms are produced due to the involvement of the temporal lobe. Some patient may have the symptom of hearing loss due to the involvement of the auditory cortex. Now this is all about the complete middle cerebral artery syndrome. Now the next is a partial middle cerebral artery syndrome which means the occlusion of the single branch of the middle cerebral artery. As we all know that this middle cerebral artery has a two divisions, superior division and inferior division. Superior division supplies the motor cortex, sensory cortex and Broca's area. So the symptoms are produced due to the involvement of this tree structure. If the motor cortex is involved, then the symptom is a contralateral hemiplegia. And if the sensory cortex is involved, then the symptom is contralateral hemianesthesia. And if the Broca's area is getting involved, then the symptom is Broca's aphasia or the expressive aphasia. Now this is about the superior division. Now if the inferior division is occluded, then normally inferior division supplies the vernix area, visual cortex, auditory area and temporal lobe. The symptoms are produced due to the involvement of this four area. If the vernix area is involved, then the symptom is vernix aphasia. If the visual cortex is involved, then the symptom is homonomous hemianopia. 
due to the involvement of the auditory cortex there is a symptom of hearing loss and some psychological symptoms also present if the temporal lobe is involved so this is about the inferior division so as we all know that motor cortex is not supplied by the inferior division it is supplied by the superior division so the hemiplegia is also not present when the occlusion occurs in the inferior division but here patient himself thinks that the half of the body is not working this is known as a hanging neglect so this is seen if the inferior division is occluded this is all about the partial middle cerebral artery syndrome hello friends myself rina nagar i am here by to discuss about investigation and management part of the middle cerebral artery syndrome first we will discuss about the investigation if we are talking about the brain pathology the first investigation come in our, in our mind is mri and ct scan when we do the ct scan and mri there are some advantages and disadvantages first the mri now its advantages first all the thromboembolic stroke are well recovered by the mri the location and the extension of the infarction is well recovered by the mri the third is posterior portion infarction is well seen into the mri now the ct scan all the hemorrhagic stroke are well seen into the ct scan it is a less consuming process and easily afforded the next investigation is cerebral spinal fluid test it is not recommended into the ischemic stroke if there is a hemorrhage into the subarachnoid space then it is advisable otherwise not the third investigation is color doppler of the aorta it is one type of the sonography of the blood vessels it is for the detection of the artery to artery thrombus the fourth investigation is echocardiogram it is for the detection of the heart to artery embolus the fifth investigation is electrocardiogram it is for the detection of the cardiac complication if there is a myocardial infarction or cardiomegaly atrial fibrillation this type of condition it is well detected by the ecg the next investigation is x-ray chest it is also for the detection of the cardiac complication like cardiomegaly core pulmonary now the blood investigation the chart of blood investigation should be advisable into the ct stroke first is peripheral blood smear it is for the detection of the rbc related abnormality like thalassemia sickle cell anemia the next is blood sugar level for the detection of the diabetes where is the person having the hyperglycemic condition or not the third is serum plate it is for the detection of the chronic renal failure the next is serum electrolyte for the detection of the imbalance between the electrolytes is it necessary yes if there is a hyperkalemic condition means the potassium level is more than the 6 mg per deciliter it create the bradycardia and risk of the ct stroke in this condition patient is need to be put on the dialysis now the bicarbonate level if there is a acidosis like condition it create the emergence the next blood investigation is lipid profile for the dyslipidemia and the bleeding time prothrombin time these are the investigation should be advisable for the ct stroke now the management part of the middle cerebral artery syndrome which are the point we should consider during the treatment part first medical support next intravenous thrombolytic agent endovascular method antiplatelet therapy anticoagulant therapy statin rehabilitation and neuroprotection so we will discuss one after another the first is medical support in the condition of the cerebral infarction the immediate goal is to optimize the cerebral perfusion in the surrounding pulmonary area under the heading of medical support we will do the two things prevention of the complication and maintenance of the vitals for the prevention we will give the antibiotic for the prevention of the infection like the pneumonia urinary tract infection second give the subcutaneous repairing for the prevention of the deep venous thrombosis we will also insert the catheterization while still feeding because there is a paralysis of the muscles now the maintenance of the vital the first is blood pressure hypertension should not be treated acutely because if the patient having the hypertension for the years the blood vessels and the collaterals are adapted with the high blood pressure but in the condition like the malignant hypertension in which there is a systolic and diastolic pressure are too high in this condition the physician has to bring to the to the dead level on which the collaterals are adapted with that the next is the blood sugar level if the patient having the hyperglycemic condition 
the physician should be immediately drop the normal level because it will cause the cerebral edema so by this we can prevent the cerebral herniation now the next is temperature if the person having the high blood temperature it should be immediately cured by the antipyretic treatment so by this we can prevent the intracerebral hemorrhage now the next is an intravenous thrombolytic therapy in this therapy the agent we will use is rtpa recombinant tissue plasma activator the dose required is 0.9 mg per body weight intravenously within 3 hours of onset of stroke there is some indication and contraindication of this therapy first we will discuss about the indication if the patient is come within a time window in severe stroke the time window is 2 to 3 hours if the middle cerebral artery involved is less than a one third part the physician has to assure about the thromboembolic stroke and if the patient having the age more than 80 years then it is indicated now the contraindication if the middle cerebral artery involved more than two third part if the patient age is less than 18 years if there is a hemorrhagic stroke it is not advisable there is a history of head injury recent 3 months if the patient having the history of myocardial infarction in recent past in this condition the rtpa is contraindicated the next treatment is antiplatelet therapy the drug of choice would be the aspirin the dose of aspirin is 300 mg daily in the initial days followed by the tapering of dose up to the 150 mg with clopidogrel 75 mg daily the next is anticoagulant therapy the routine use of anticoagulant into the acute ischemic stroke it is not recommended but when we will give so the indication is high risk of early cardiogenic embolism the next is hypoperiodical state the next is atherosclerosis stenosis with transient ischemic attack in above condition we can use the anticoagulant which anticoagulant we will use the low molecular weight heparin the dose is 5000 international unit bolus in initial days followed by tapering dose up to the 1000 international unit intravenous day next is a neuroprotection neuroprotection is a concept of providing a treatment that prolongs the brain tolerance against the ischemia so how we can provide this neuroprotection by cold sponging by putting the patient into the ac room for the internal temperature we can provide the cold water by the rice tea by this way we can provide the neural protection the next is a statin treatment in which we can give the atrovast statin 10 to 20 mg per day now the next treatment is endovascular method named by the parotid and arteriotomy in which the plaque is located at the origin of the internal carotid artery in the neck and give the thrombolytic agent indication of this treatment is patient having the risk of multiple sclerosis the second is stenosis of the internal carotid artery in this condition we can provide this treatment there are some advantages of this treatment the required dose of thrombolytic agent is less in this treatment we will give the thrombolytic agent in the local area so this agent is not go into the systemic circulation so there is a less chance of the bleeding or hemorrhage from the other part of the body it absorbs the thrombus and reestablishes the circulation the last but not least treatment is rehabilitation by this we can improve the neurological outcome and reduce the mortality part it include the physiotherapy psychotherapy speech therapy eye therapy by all this therapy we can build the confidence of the patient and improve the day to day activity of the patient this all therapy can prevent the complication like deep venous thrombosis pulmonary embolism vascular wasting this is all about the middle cerebral artery syndrome